may have seen some of our previous videos where we're discussing the use of stem cells in treatment of multiple sclerosis, including the publication that we put out um, in which three patients went into remission following uh, administration of their own fat-derived stem cells. Now, in order to um, develop new treatments and to think about what is the cutting edge of therapy for multiple sclerosis, it is important to know what other people in the field are doing and how that can be integrated, if it can, into different treatment protocols. So, there's a paper that I just read which talks about the use of lithium in treatment of the animal model of multiple sclerosis. Now, obviously, this video here is not intended to tell patients to start taking lithium. That's why I put this little disclaimer up. We're just discussing some possible mechanisms. Now, what is lithium? Lithium is an element, obviously, as you can see in the picture, it, grow, it uh, makes a red flame uh, when it's burnt, but lithium has also been used extensively for different neurological conditions for about half a century without people really knowing what its mechanism of action is. Primarily, it's used for, um, as a mood stabilizer, but for other conditions as well. Now, more recently, there is an enzyme called GSK3, which is involved in controlling pathological immune responses, but it's also involved in inhibiting, I mean in stimulating endogenous stem cells. So this is one of the reasons why we thought this paper might be exciting to talk about. So what the investigators did is they used the normal model of multiple sclerosis, which is you immunize the mouse with parts of myelin. And what that does is it stimulates an immune response against the immunized myelin, and then the immune response starts and attacks the myelin sheath, like multiple sclerosis. And the more severe the disease is, the higher the disease score is. You know, the initial disease score one is that the tail can't wag anymore, and then five is that the animal is dead, four is that the animal is paralyzed, and so on. So, as you can see in the first figure, if you give lithium to mice in which you induce this multiple sclerosis-like disease, there is an inhibition of disease severity. As you can see, the treated mice had inhibited disease. The mice that were not treated, they, the disease um, went up. Now, in the first figure, the lithium was administered before disease induction. In the second figure, they wait 20 days, and then they start giving lithium. And the reason for that is to mimic the human situation where you are giving something after the disease progression has started. So it seems at least at the functional level that lithium is inhibiting this animal model of disease. How is it doing this? Well, if you do sections, if, if you look in the spinal cord and you do uh, histological sections, you can see in the control animals that are not given EAE, that are not stimulated to attack themselves, there is very little microglial activation. It's not very red. If you look in the mice that have EAE, which is the animal multiple sclerosis, you can see microglial activation. Microglial activation is one of the methods in which MS um, induces disability in the patients. Microglia are macrophage-like cells in the brain that cause inflammation. If you give the lithium, as you can see here, the lithium-treated ones, there is an inhibition of microglial activation. There is also inhibition of demyelination. As you can see in the control mice that do not have the disease, the blue is myelin. This is stained with Luxol blue. In mice that have the disease, there is a demyelination. Mice treated with lithium, there is less demyelination. The same is also true for activation of I mean infiltration of neutrophils, because neutrophils also cause damage. This is staining for myeloperoxidase, and we see the same, the same thing. Control mice very little. Uh, treated mice that have the disease, they have a lot of neutrophil activation, and then when the mice are treated with lithium, there's less neutrophil activation. Same thing for infiltrating CD4 T cells, as you can see in this figure. In the, in, in the mice that have the disease, there is a lot of T cells in there, in the mice that do CD4 cells, in the mice that have been treated with lithium, there is very, very little CD4 T cells. And 
the most interesting thing perhaps on this publication is that when you take the T cells out of the animal and you stimulate them with something that activates all T cells called CD3, you have the same T cell activation, lithium treated and control. So the lithium is not doing this blanket immune suppression. It seems to be only suppressing, as you can see here, it seems to be only suppressing the T cells that are reactive against the myelin, the ones that are MOG specific, myelin oligodentocyte protein. So in conclusion, it seems that lithium does have some therapeutic effects, at least in this animal model. The therapeutic effects seem to be mediated by inhibition of microglial activation, inhibition of demyelination, and stopping the entry of CD4 uh, and neutrophils into the central nervous system. So for next steps in this study, it's going to be very interesting to see if the lithium affects the stem cell component that already is in the brain. And it will of course be interesting to see if synergies can be attained in animal models by combining lithium with other, with, uh, other stem cell therapeutic approaches. Thank you very much.